In this PowerPoint and lecture, we're going to review herbs, vitamins, and minerals. We need a well-balanced diet of proteins, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and lipids. A healthy diet should provide us with all the nourishment that we need, but sometimes individuals are unable to maintain that healthy diet and supplements may be prescribed. Supplements come in all kinds of different forms in powders, capsules, liquids, and tablets. It's important when reviewing a patient's history and medications, we must ask them about the supplements they're using. Supplements may either enhance or inhibit treatment prescribed by their physician. As we learned early on in our study of pharmacology, when we discussed the history, we talked about herbs and how they had been used for centuries. We also discussed that health practices are very individual. While many individuals use herbs to self-treat or self-medicate, patients may also take supplements to avoid seeking assistance from physicians for health issues. Supplements are usually not harmful, but some can be dangerous. There can be in danger when they're taken in the wrong quantity, or some may have serious interactions with prescription medications. Again, it's important for patients to talk about their herbal supplements with their physician. Well, I've created a list of some of the more popular herbals here. The first one is aloe vera, and that may be used for burns. Chamomile tea may be used for relaxation and insomnia. Echinacea may boost the immune system. Garlic is good to decrease blood pressure and cholesterol. Ginger is good for digestion. Ginseng can give you energy. Green tea can to prevent cancer. Turmeric may be given to decrease inflammation. Valerian may help for sleep. And St. John's wort is used for depression. There are a lot of different thoughts about herbal supplementation. These are very individual and very personal in nature. Some individuals believe that conventional treatment does not or cannot eliminate the disease and that herbal treatments and therapies are the only way to go. Some of the arguments against supplementation are that herbs are not regulated by the FDA as medications. They're regulated as dietary supplements so manufacturers' guidelines of these products are different than prescription medications. There also may be inconsistent amounts of herbs between the different manufacturers. Lastly, the sources of information on herbs may not contain information about safety and dosing. Herbs are sometimes considered as CAM or complementary alternative medicine. They're used to complement or as an alternative to conventional medical therapy. CAM therapy includes herbs, vitamins, minerals, massage therapy, aromatherapy, acupuncture, acupressure, reflexology, and other things shown in these pictures. Some people use CAM therapy because they lack confidence in conventional treatments. They believe that traditional treatments are ineffective in disease elimination or just plain dangerous. Many traditional practitioners are reluctant to utilize herbal therapy for their patients. One reason for this is that many herbs have less scientific testing than modern drugs. Insurance companies are also reluctant to pay for alternative therapies, including herbal remedies. These companies believe that they lack scientific evidence supporting effectiveness. Many CAM therapies emphasize an Eastern philosophy rather than a Western philosophy of healing. Eastern philosophy focuses on the body's ability to heal itself, that the use of herbs promote self-healing, that disease is a result of imbalances within the body, and health returns when balance is restored. Western philosophy focuses on medications to target specific problems. Physicians believe that disease is caused by physiological disorders. Eastern and Western philosophies are meeting as integral therapy, combining conventional medical treatments with CAM therapy. As patient caregivers, it's important that we understand the different philosophies that patients have towards healing. We also need to be aware of, their, of our own values and our own philosophies. 
Vitamins are organic nutrients, and that means that they contain carbon. They're essential in regulating chemical processes in the body. They maintain strong bones and release energy from food and control hormones. Vitamin deficiencies can lead to illness, and overdose can lead to illness or death. Small doses of vitamins are good. However, mega doses are not usually better. The FDA has established recommended daily allowances for vitamins and minerals. These recommended daily allowances, or RDA, vary based on patient's age, gender, and sometimes on health conditions. It's common to see changes in the urine with vitamin supplements. Urine color may change to a bright yellow or have a stronger. If dosages are within the recommended range, it's usually not a concern. However, if large doses are taken for long periods of time, serious health issues may occur, including damage to the heart, the liver, and the kidneys. Vitamins are considered either fat-soluble or water-soluble. Fat-soluble vitamins are not excreted from the body. They're stored when they are not needed, and they can build up toxic levels. Water-soluble vitamins are not stored, but are excreted by the body. I learned that fat-soluble vitamins by A-D-E-K, all dogs enjoy kittens. You can make up your own mnemonic to remember this important fact. Here's a quick lowdown on vitamins. So vitamin A is required for healthy skin, teeth, bone, and soft tissue. It's essential for vision, reproductive, and immune health. Vitamin D promotes healthy development of bone and retention and absorption of calcium and phosphorus. Vitamin E plays a role in the formation of red blood cells and muscles and supports the immune system. Vitamin K is important in the clotting process of the body, and without it, bleeding abnormalities can occur. So here are your water-soluble vitamins. Those are your B vitamins and your C vitamin. You know, it's important to note that since water-soluble vitamins are not stored, they must be ingested. I like to highlight a few of the B vitamins. Vitamin B1 is thiamine, and that prevents imbalances caused by alcohol consumption. Vitamin B3 or niacin decreases cholesterol levels, but it has the side effect of flushing, and many can't take it for that reason. Vitamin B9 or folic acid decreases spinal bifida in the unborn fetus. So folic acid is an important vitamin for women that are pregnant. Vitamin B12 improves memory and increases red blood cell production. Those may be ordered for people with anemia. Then we have your vitamin C or ascorbic acid. Vitamin C is great for connective tissue, bones, and teeth. Vitamin C helps with wound healing, and at the hospital I work at, it's routinely ordered. Minerals are inorganic chemical elements, which means they lack carbon. They're important to maintain health and are required for almost every single function in our bodies. As important as vitamins are, they do nothing for you without minerals. Vitamins cannot be assimilated without the aid of minerals. And though the body can manufacture a few vitamins, it cannot manufacture a single mineral. All tissues and internal fluids of our body contains various quantities of minerals. Minerals are part of our bones, our teeth, soft tissue, muscle, blood, and nerve cells. They're vital to overall mental and physical well-being. Minerals are categorized as either major or trace. Major minerals are those that the body needs in large amounts. Here's a list of the major and trace minerals. The major minerals are important for you to know because of the important function that they have. So calcium strengthens bones and teeth and it affects muscle contraction. Magnesium helps produce energy, replicates cell material, and helps muscles to relax. Phosphorus helps bones and teeth form. It's a cofactor for many enzymes and it activates B-complex vitamins. Potassium stabilizes the internal structure of cells. It has a profound effect on muscles, especially the heart muscle. I think of CAM like CAM therapy when I think about the excess and deficiency of potassium. Higher low potassium can cause C, which is confusion. A is for arrhythmias. Higher low potassium can cause lethal heart arrhythmias. And lastly, M is for muscles. 
Low potassium can cause muscle weakness, and high potassium can cause muscle tremors. Sodium and chloride are in every cell of our bodies and are key in maintaining fluid and electrolyte balance and help with nerve signal transmission. Here's a quick review of some of the key trace minerals. Chromium metabolizes carbohydrates. Copper improves arthritis. Fluoride decreases dental caries. Iron increases energy and decreases iron deficiency anemia. Iodine protects the toxic effects of exposure to radioactive material and prevents goiter and thyroid disorders. Zinc boosts the immune system and helps with wound healing. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein, and protein is the building blocks of our cells. There are eight essential amino acids which can only be obtained through diet. When we talk about a food being a complete protein, it means that all eight essential amino acids are present. Those who have adopted vegetarian lifestyles must be diligent about getting complete proteins. There are some plant-based foods which are complete proteins such as quinoa, hemp, and buckwheat. It's also necessary to consume high-quality complete proteins in order for the body to utilize them. There are also 12 non-essential amino acids, and non-essential means that they can be made from other substances in the body. Well, that's it for herbs, vitamins, and minerals. If you have any questions, let me know. You can bring them to the Farm Cafe or bring them to class.